Welcome back. Joining us in studio today, Governor Josh Green. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Well, it's been kind of a rough week if you're a nominee for a head of a department, DHHL in specific. Yes. That was a little rough for the last nominee. You have some good news there, though, in a new direction. Yes, yeah, so uh, much respect for Kaika, who did not get chosen. So he's going to do good work for our state going forward. But we chose Kali Watson to be the next one up. Look, my feeling is the voters asked me to do a job. They sent me to work on housing and affordability and homeless. I'm going to do it. And I want to put the best people in there. There are a lot of great people that want to serve, and Kali will be one of them. And Kali was one of them before. Why is this, in your mind, the great pick? Well, it's a great pick because he knows the job. And I think the Senate was, you know, prickly about things because we were being as thoughtful as we could be, but we thought we had to move that plan forward with some creativity uh, because times continue to change. Kali has done the job that they are asking us to do before, so... We can deliver housing. He knows that market. All right. You also have a big job ahead of you with a lot of money in the state budget. Got to spend it and spend it wisely. What are some of the new things you want to spend a pretty big surplus on? Right. So the surplus right now over the next two years goes to about $2.8 or $2.9 billion, which is enormous. And the people need services. So we need to build housing. First and foremost, $900 million of our surplus is devoted to housing in our budget proposal, uh, in addition to a lot of rental housing funds and so on, revolving trust funds. That's critical, but there's so much more. We're also putting $500 million into the rainy day fund just in case a recession comes. That will be flexible monies if we're struggling. $100 million for climate impact. Again, that's a Big, big commitment because our state deserves it. We're dealing with climate change. I'm also increasing reimbursements uh, for Medicaid services. A lot of people who are struggling to get good health care can't find a provider. We need to have more health care dollars. And the 25 to $30 million that I put into that budget doubles because the federal guys match that. I just went to Washington to secure that deal and make sure they would do it. So there's a lot going on, but these monies have to go back to the people. People need mental health care services. People were struggling, as you know, during COVID. So my job is to rebuild government and get us housing. Sure. Now, people hear surplus, and they might think, well, that just means too much is being collected in taxes. Let's start with the tax cut that you plan as well. Right. That's uh, most important to me, probably, of all things. We proposed a $315 million per year tax cut to go to what are described as Alice families. Now, what does that mean? That's anyone between about $40,000 of earnings for a family of four to about $140,000. These are families that are tending to live paycheck to paycheck. They spend all of their resources on housing, their mortgage their rent, their food, medicine. So what will we do? We'll increase the standard deduction. We'll increase the earned income tax credit. We will give people credits if their kids are going to preschool. It's important to put money back into working families' uh, pockets because they will, number one, do better. Two, they won't have to leave Hawaii. Three, they'll spend it immediately on what they need. So families who are much poorer, under $40,000 per year, already have a lot of you know, tax breaks and a lot of extra services. So this is for the, the large swath of our families across the state. It's like 42% of our state is living in that category, and it's tough. All right. Well, people will look forward to that cut materializing. It's almost time to see Aloha to Aloha Stadium. Yes. How will that work, and what's the mechanics of getting rid of the old one? You know, it was a wonderful place for us for over 45 years, right? I was there at the YouTube concert with Jamie, and she was eight months pregnant with Maya. That stadium was rocking. And we'll miss that, but we'll build a new stadium. So what you'll see in the coming weeks will be essentially a three-stage plan for the stadium. We'll put about 25 to $30 million to wreck the old one. That's going to be through a, you know, a request for proposal. Then we will build a stadium with some private partnership. It's going to be about 350 to $400 million of spend to get us a new stadium. And then part three will be the housing and the district around it, which is also very important. It's important we move forward on these projects because we have to, once and for all, put the old problems behind us. You mentioned blowing up. Do you mean that literally, or is that up to the contractors to come in and tell us how they demolition? Yeah, I'll leave it to them. I think <laughs> that they are going to do a lot of cutting of steel, and it's a big project. It's, it's, not, um, it's not something to trifle with, but the way I'm going to accelerate the program is we can demolish the old stadium while they're finalizing the contract to build the new one, which is about a six to seven month process. I really want these things to get going because I know people have been frustrated that we don't have a state of the art stadium for our football team and for concerts and whatever else, professional rugby, soccer, everything. And when do you hope it, the new one could be open by best case? It's probably a four and a half year process overall, but 
look, we'll see progress right away because as we demolish the old Aloha Stadium, that will be the sign that we're moving forward. All right, a sign indeed. Well, Governor, thank you as always for taking the time to be here. Thanks for having me. And we'll send it back to you.